Welcome back guys to another Zero DTE video and today Ernie's going to be talking about consistency in trading so make sure you stay tuned. If you're interested in becoming a pro trader check out the link in the description where you can find Ernie's education platform. Enjoy guys. We choose an out of the money butterfly for lots of reasons because it follows with our asymmetry philosophy. How far out of the money and what width and what size are all things that have mathematical and philosophical reasonings. But generally, if it's low volatility, we choose narrow flies. If it's high volatility, we choose wide flies. What's narrow and what's wide? I guess that depends on what you're actually trading, whether it's the SPX or the NDX or the XSP or the e mini S&P or the rut even, the index for the Russell 2000. But generally, we want very narrow flies in an attempt to reduce our exposure to risk in low volatility. And when volatility gets bigger, we want to expose ourselves to more of that volatility because it will benefit us. That's the most general way I can describe how we choose with. In terms of where we actually place it, that is really determined by the asymmetry that we choose to set up. Our potential for profit and we define our risk. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a, a relatively large ratio in that asymmetry, one to nine to one to 10, one to 15, one to 20. But our primary goal is to keep the cost of the trade small enough so that we do not have to manage it. It's the primary reason why we make it as small as we do so that we don't have to manage it. It is defined risk. And it's not just so that we don't have to manage it. It's more so that we can focus on the profit management as opposed to the risk management. Does everybody understand that? We want to focus on profit management rather than risk management. Now, that ratio of risk to reward is up for debate and depends on all kinds of different backdrops and market contexts and everything. What we're doing every day is we're putting on an experiment. And in the spirit of experimenting in a sane and rational way, we want to get as much data data as we possibly can. If we only have one choice to make each day, we don't want to make the same choice every day because that would not give us enough variance in our data to make any kind of rational choice. So we choose to trade within a range, but that's not the only reason why we choose to trade in a range. Now, one thing that you may notice every time I'm talking about, that's not, I keep on saying, that's not the only reason why we do that. Or, or we choose to do in a range, or we do this and that, we do a, a whole bunch of different data points, et cetera. And there's a good reason for that as well. And I fall back on things that I learned from mentors. And I, I have this one little cliche that I guess it's not necessarily a cliche yet, but that one of my mentors used to say, and he would say, big pants fit more butts. And what he meant by that was that we want to find strategies that will work across a wide range of variables. The narrower the range of variables that a strategy will work, the less reliable it will be. And that reliability factor increases increases geometrically as you go down to a narrower set of range of variables that you think will work. Yet that is what most people trade to. They, they think that there is a specific best average price or target for profit or whatever it is. They think that there is a specific thing that you must trade based on all their back testing that will give them the best results, which is a fallacy. What you want to do is you want to find a strategy that will work across a wide range of things. Now, considering that, that there's going to be a range of results from small to large or an optimal to less than optimal. But as long as you have a wide range, there's a better chance that of you making profit than not. The problem is that we don't know where or when and to what extent that sweet spot of that profitability will be. And so the only logical thing then to do if you're going to trade within that wide range of results is to vary your criteria so that you can find or adjust or lean to one side or the other or the center in order to affect a better result. That's the best that we can do because we have no foresight on exactly what's going to happen. It's a random distribution. I guess you can say that there are patterns in that randomness that kind of constrain what we do, but it is still a random distribution. So there's no way to tell what is going to be the optimal result at the start of any one individual day and then say, yeah, based on everything I see, I will do this because that shows to be the best possible 
result. There's just no way for you to make that statement with any kind of certainty or credibility. That's true, but that doesn't make that spot any worse than any other spot. That's why we try right. different things. But there may be reasons why you might want to lean towards one end of the range versus the other, right? And that also, Kevin, is an experiment on any given day. You lean towards one yep. side or the other. You choose the center because you don't know. And then only after words can you really see the effect of that result and you can't see it in any one particular instance you have to see it over a number of instances before you can start making any kind of conclusion right, right. so if you're picking your point based on some certain criteria that you feel is valid what you're saying is just keep doing it that way and watch it over a whole bunch of time don't keep changing around do it that way and see if that proves to you to be effective and if it does stick with it if it doesn't then change it up correct yeah but i would say don't like lock in on a certain thing even if you think that for instance if you feel like you should be at the upper end of the range don't pick a single value and then stick with that over and over and over again you can still be in that upper end of the range and, and still vary it a bit that's correct but your reasoning for being in the upper end of the range you, you want to keep steady so that you can see if that works if that reasoning yeah. works as long as those conditions are there and that's your hypothesis Hypothesis. And every week you're checking your hypothesis. You look at the results and you see what it did. And even in any one week, like I said, you're not going to have enough data. You don't right. even start to have enough data until you have 50, 60, 100 trades, quite frankly, before you start. Well, I mean, it takes even that long before you start developing any kind of acumen in terms of your, your ability to push the buttons correctly and, and have good muscle memory and execution skills. And then once you've gotten that down a little bit, then there's your process. And once you get your process kind of dialed in and you're doing things consistently, the quality of your data isn't going to be that great either. So in the beginning, you're a volatile mess, quite frankly. And what I'm describing is no different than any kind of skill-based thing that you've ever tried to attempt. So trading is no different from that respect. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the like button below. If there's any questions that you might have for Coach Journey, make sure you leave them in the comment section. Thanks guys.